Charles and Mark from Pointy. Welcome to Irish Startup TV. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so guys, would you like to tell us a little bit about Pointy? Do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. alright. So um, this is Pointy. It's right here. So um, Pointy is a, a little box that fits in between um, your barcode scanner and your till. So it's basically a way to get a small shop online very, very easily. Um, so if you're in a small shop, it's, it's like it's traditionally been very hard to, to create a website. You have to sort of you know go and engage a web designer and then go and find like names and pictures for products, and, and it really takes a, like a long time, a lot of work. Um, so with Pointy, it basically is pretty much instant. So if you've got a barcode scanner, that which you would normally just plug straight into your till, you just plug it in via Pointy, um, like this. I can do this. <laughs> um, and um, this basically connects your barcode scanner to the internet. So whenever you zap something now with your barcode scanner, it goes straight up on the website that we sort of create and host and maintain for the shop. So um, you know, it really takes then you know seconds really to get up a product uh, if it's uh, you know on the system already. Um, and if it isn't on the system, we go and do all the work to make sure it gets on the system. So it's it's very simple and quick. Yeah. Okay, so if I don't have a website and I'm looking to start trading online, you can provide the technology and the website. To get me there. That's right, yeah, it's absolutely zero effort. So you literally just plug the little box in and then 15 minutes later you've got a website. And where is the website hosted? This is on Pointy and we sort of do all the work of maintaining the server and all that kind of stuff for people. So the domain people get is like pointy.com slash Dublin slash you know your shop name. Um, okay. So uh, and the nice thing about sort of centralizing is that as well as managing you know, making sure the servers work and so on, we also like manage the SEO for them. So, you know, they can get the benefit of our domain. And a lot of our shops rank very, very well on Google for like you know, particular product queries. So someone's searching for, you know, they want a purple bicycle helmet in Dublin and like they type that into Google. Uh, like a lot of pointy sites are, are coming to the top for those kind of queries. And so we help like basically just drive people into the shops, which is you know, what we're all about and I guess what retail is like. Another nice thing about keeping it on the same platform is that you get a common look and feel across all of the shops. So from the consumer's perspective, they know, you know, know what to expect when they land on a page. Primarily it's about driving traffic. It, at the moment it's primarily about driving people to local stores. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And what inspired the idea? <laughs> so uh, it's funny, it was a, a friend of mine was at a party and there was like this craft beer which is like really popular at the moment and he, he liked it and he could never find it again. And so we were just like batting back and forth, we were like, how can we solve this? You know, how, are, how are we going to make it easy to find what you want to find locally? And um, after sort of going back and forth over various crazy ways to do it, we sort of came up with this way, which is actually quite practical. <laughs> and you I think you say your crazy way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to make robots. I wanted to make robots that would drive around all the stores every night and like photograph everything on all the shelves, and then that would be the way to, to figure out what was in them. Uh, and then uh, I was actually my brother who told me that that was insane. And <laughs> we came up with this simpler way to do it. It's a great <laughs> idea. Very laborious for the poor old robots. <laughs> <laughs> And how did you guys decide to, to work together? Are you guys co-founders now? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. So we've known each other for a long while. We both did PhDs at Oxford together. Um, and then when we finished our PhDs, we went off, did our own separate things. Um, I was actually off on a sailing trip around the Mediterranean when Mark phoned me up with the idea for Pointy. Uh, I spent about five weeks thinking about it. Mm. Loved the idea, absolutely loved the idea, uh, and decided to sail back at full speed from Mallorca to Dublin to come and do this. Fantastic, yeah. And you both have a bit of pedigree as well in startups and in technology. That's right, so we've both done very different things. So um, when I finished my PhD, I went on to do the security system for the marine sailing events uh, for the oh, 2012 okay. Olympics. Um, which was a huge integration project. Serious bit of technology. Serious bit of technology, yeah. Um, so it was electronics on lots of boats, about 400 boats, uh, with a command centre and a warship, and a command centre and a police station on the land, and integration over military satellite, and all these sort of things. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite used to distributed electronic systems, which uh, is ultimately what point to use. And Mark, you're more familiar with the consumer side? Yeah, a little bit. So um, after my PhD, I, I did a startup uh, called Plink, um, which was, um, well, we sold it to Google in 2010, and it's sort of now part of Google Goggles. Um, and the technology is, it lets you kind of point your phone at painting and see who painted it, that kind of thing. Uh, so that was, um, that was my, my first go around, I guess, and it was, um, it was great. I learned an awful lot very quickly, and a lot of it's been very helpful um, you know, doing this startup. Um, but yeah, I didn't know very much about the sort of hardware and manufacturing side. That was all kind of completely foreign to me. And so I, 
I rang up Charles for some advice and I was really surprised when he said that he could do it because I knew he was busy basically but mm. it was uh, fantastic you know it's worked really well because we got quite just complimentary. Loved the ideas. idea basically. <laughs> so like, where, while I was at work I relate to it because I was constantly visiting foreign cities and you just don't know where anything is when you first arrive and I think pointy would be ideal for something like that. I used to spend days looking for stuff. Yeah, it can be a nightmare. Yeah. Finding barriers to you overseas is absolutely, absolutely yeah, anything like that. Irish people. Yeah, absolutely. The experience you you brought to Pointy did it make life easier? So for me, definitely, you know, in designing that box, the stuff that I've done before helps enormously, enormously. Yeah. And then, yeah, well, I mean, for me, a couple of things. I mean, one of the big ones um, was like raising the finance, uh, sort of knowing, you know, just sort of how to talk to investors, you know, what their expectations are, and. Like one of the things that actually helped me the most was after my last startup um, was sold, I did some angel investing myself. So I sort of invested okay. in like you know, maybe half a dozen kind of companies. And so I got to see sort of you know, how the process works on both sides of the table, you know, as an investor and also as an entrepreneur. And so that you just have a, a very good understanding then of like, you know, what the parameters are, like you know, how, how it works, um, which I had no idea about the first time around, but I had no idea at all. And this time you know, I'm much more sort of, you know, able to handle that part of things. Um, and also, I mean, working at Google for a couple of years was, um, Certainly, like you learn, you know, a lot about distributed systems and like how to, you know, you know have high quality code and stuff. And that was great as well. You guys are very much technologists. Did you work exclusively on Pointy together, or did you have to bring in other skill sets? So right from the word go, really, you brought in another skill set, didn't you? Which um, to help with the business side of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've um, we've a couple of. I think the team at the moment is nine. Well, there's six permanent people. And there's some some people who are on sort of summer internships. Um, but yeah, we've got like you know, some people who are sales. And um, you know, right at the very start, uh, a, a friend of mine uh, whose background is in law, but he's sort of helped a lot with sort of operations and business and like sort of legal side and just making the company run basically, which was really really helpful. Um, and then of course we've got some design, you know, external designers, you know, helping with them, um, you know, just branding and all look and feel and stuff. And um, we were very lucky to have like one of our early hires was a, it's just this amazing developer who's like not only a full stack engineer but also kind of almost a designer. So he, he just like that's rare. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's got a real eye for it. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So he does everything from like you yeah. know, server code to like you know graphic design. It's a pretty amazing combination. Yeah. And in terms of the actual widget itself, so you've designed it yourselves here in Dublin, yeah. and you've manufactured it in Shannon. That's interesting because a lot of tech happens in Shannon. We don't always talk about it. That's that's right. Yeah, yeah. So we're using a company called Smart Electronics to actually do the manufacture. Uh, and the main reason for picking a company, you know, here is to make sure that it's near to us, so we can actually go and visit the guys and make sure things are going right. And so far, they've been excellent. Absolutely superb. Like they're very, very open to startups and, and doing new projects in smaller quantities. Yeah. And if somebody else had a technology idea and they, they've developed it and they want to have it manufactured, what kind of steps are involved? How do you go about finding a manufacturer? So it's really a case of you know shortlisting suitable candidates, finding someone who's about the right size. Um, so you can't go to an enormous manufacturer and then ask for small batches because you just don't fit with their scheduling. Um, so you need you need a company that's sort of geared to do batches of the right size. Um, and then yeah, once you've got that shortlist, it's just a case of going and visiting them, looking at the facilities, making sure you're happy with the facilities, making sure you're happy with the people, um, and that you think you can work with them, basically. So on that note then, uh, that might be a challenge for somebody. Have you guys encountered any other challenges? So we've got a challenge right at the moment actually, which is a supply issue with one of the chips that goes into the design of okay. this particular box. Um, and that's something that is, that is quite hard, you know. It's scouring yeah, the world yeah, yeah. for this particular really? component that just ran out kind of like in the basement yeah. in the Philippines. So right now, it's in the Philippines right now, yeah. Yeah. it's about to be shipped to Ireland and should arrive on the 17th or something. But um, it's very hard when you're doing small quantities um, to have enough cloud basically to influence you know, supplies. Yeah. I remember reading Alan Sugar's book and it seemed to have been a big issue when he was starting out as well, getting yeah. chips and in fact a lot of them do come from the Philippines. Yeah, all over, all over the place, all over the place. Yeah. 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 Fantastic, and anything else that's uh, coming up on the roadmap that you'd like to share with us? Um, well, at the moment we're, we're just sort of rolling out um, you know, this device to more and more shops. I think we're in just you know, 80 or 90 shops at the moment. And um, the big push for us uh, now is like to, we want to get to like, you know, 
a larger number of shops in Dublin so that like you know somebody could like pull out their phone and say they want you know whatever it is like you know some hard to find product and we'll, we'll know where that product is. Um, so yeah, we've got a big push over the summer to onboard lots of retailers and um, we have a sort of special offer for them at the moment where we're giving them a, a one year free trial. You know we're giving them the box for free and a year service completely free to try and get some of them on board. So um, that's a pretty generous that's offer. Pointy.com. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, so that's I guess our main focus at the moment is just like trying to get more shops on board, and make sure they have a great experience. A lot of people would possibly question why Ireland to start out. So one of the main reasons is nice size, to be honest. Um, so to align it with the first round of funding, you can do a city of a certain size, and Dublin fits nicely, you know, with that size. Yeah. It's a nice city to work in. There's lots of startup stuff going on in Dublin. Yeah. So it's a good test bed. It's a great it test is, bed. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got the sort of right mix of like yeah. lots of people with smartphones and you know lots of people sort of engaged in this kind of thing. So if you look at you know, the metrics of lots of other startups like you know, Halo and so on, they, a lot of them did very, very well in Dublin. Um, so it's a good place to start. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Well, guys, thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you. And look forward to reading more about you in dispatches. <laughs> thanks. Thanks.